It's time for another tale from the glass-guarded world. Ashley plays Terra Dane, the human fighter. Josh is Zartok, the tiefling wizard. And Gaston, the rogue and bard. Jessica is Quarrel Petricor, the Genasi druid. Mama Sass, the half-orc bard and barbarian. And Sylphonia, the summon Pegasus. Chris plays Aster Fortuna, the half throw rogue and bard extraordinaire. We finished up scattering the magical jars around the solar system and converting people to worshipping Coral Petricor, the goddess of magic. Now the party regroups at Mun's orbiting platform and prepares to talk to Laverian. Will we forgive him? Will we try to kill him? I don't know. We're just going to have to play it by ear. Welcome back. We are back to the regular narrative episodes after a couple skill challenges. But first, some characters have leveled up thanks to the piles of experience they have recently collected. And we need to find out what interesting what interesting changes we need to find out what interesting changes have occurred. So let's start with Jessica. Jessica, where is Coral right now? Uh Coral got three levels and Holy made it to cow. level fifteen. Wow. Now she was pretty close to leveling up already, so yeah. Made it to level 15. The only new feature that I got is Thousand Forms, uh, which just lets me cast Alter Self at Will, which is cool. Okay. Got some new hit points up to 131, uh, and I am up to 8th level spells at this point. Wow. Okay. Impressive. What about Mama Sass? Uh, Mama Sass also got three levels. She's up to 14. I took one level in uh, Barbarian. No. I took two levels in Barbarian, which put me, yes, put me at Intimidating. uh, I got Intimidating Presence. Just means that I can scare people as an action. (laughs) Uh, And one level in Bard, which gave me an ability score improvement, which I dropped into Con. Uh, so she's up to 155 hit points and got a couple extra new spells. Very cool. And Josh, what about Zartok and Gaston? Zartok's main things were just access to more spells. He also has greater portent, so that's three ro- three d20 rolls to pick from for that per day that's to cool. exchange out. I think he can only use it. Oh, he can use it three times. Okay, so that's cool. Gaston is becoming just awesome i did i've never heard of this reliable talent so that's Mm -hmm. at some skills you get to just assume a check of a 10 if you roll less than a 10 that's really nice because sometimes you roll low and it makes you feel like you suck and you don't want to suck all the time that's cool so yeah that's what that's the main things that they got i don't think i updated hit points i'm gonna figure that out that's what i'm doing now Mm. okay ashley what about tara I'm hearing that other people gained um, three levels. Tara sadly only gained two levels, putting her at level 16. Well, she was the highest level to start with. Well, so, I can still be know. mad about it, Mike. I okay, sure. <laughs> sure. Uh, so she, at 15, she got relentless. So if, uh, if she has no superiority dice remaining when she rolls initiative, she gains one of them. And, nice. um, and then I picked a new feat. Uh, it was very tough because I didn't know what to pick. So I picked Sentinel. Ooh, Sentinel's good. Yeah. Now, that's interesting. You opted not to get an ability score improvement. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, she's got 20 strength. Uh, I mean, what am I going to do? Razor intelligence? No, I think seven is good. I think she's staying at seven. I like it. <laughs> uh, that negative two is great. Um, you get an extra 30-something hit points with the uh, constitution, right? No, it would have been 15, uh, 16 extra, but yes. Oh. It's, oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, but still, 16 extra 16 yeah. extra's not bad. Yeah, she's at 167 right now. Okay. Yeah, you have plenty of hit points. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. All right, Chris, any idea of what's going on with so I, I just, Little Aster? I decided to go um, into just hard into Bard, because I'm, I'm almost at the place where I can go to level two if I get to 16 before the end of this podcast. Because I don't think there's a lot of 
experience left before we level up again, or at least for my character. Um, so I did that because I get uh, Master Flourish, which allows me to just roll a d6 whenever I use a Flourish instead of expending Bardic Inspiration, which would allow me to provide more inspiration to my team instead of expending uh. it to bolster myself. So it makes me feel more Bardy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> more Bardy. Um, and then it also meant that I have the choice of a bunch more spells. I can I can add three more spells to my repertoire and I can get up to a level seven spell. Um, but I don't know what to get. There's Teleport, Resurrection, Regenerate, Mordekainen's Sword, Mordekainen's Magnificent Mansion, Force Cage, things like that. And I, I just don't know what to get get yet i guess if i had to pick which one of those most sounded like an aster spell it might be morning kynan's magnificent mansion but as far as which one would be most useful i i, I don't know i mean i can just imagine aster saying Let, let's take a tour of my beautiful house that might be something i'm going to be doing soon uh, that that's <laughs> definitely one of the things in my in the idea force cage would also be very useful if we're going into final combat with enemies um and then I got another Magical Secrets, which, again, I don't know to pick for that, because I can pick from everything. Fireball. Yeah, that's it. that's kind of where I'm itching to go, <laughs> but we have Zartok with Fireball. Yeah. Fireball is a way overpowered spell in this game. Yeah, it is. They, they messed up on that one. So I'm going to just take a look, and I'll get back to you guys. I might not be able to do it this session, but if we start into like some serious combat, I might make some choices. If that's okay. And then my health overall right now is 147. Jeez. It's 147? Yeah. Yeah, he's just a tank bard. What? Yeah. What's um what's Terra's max hit points? 167. I'm I'm having jealousy issues right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are you at? Like 16? You, you know Gaston's a 62? <laughs> Hell wow. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if that's even mathematically like Is that possible. possible? Real quick. <laughs> Maybe you skipped a few rolls. I don't know what happened here. This is a mistake. <laughs> Zartox is is ninety is eighty nine, so that's not bad. I think Gaston's just a wimp. Oh, poor little Gaston. I mean, surely if he had some unlucky rolls, he could have rolled them again. Right? <laughs> oh, I have expertise too. Again. So I don't know what to get. I, it only gives me two options, persuasion or perception, both of which are very useful. Probably perception. Perception might be the more useful. Persuasion is the more aster. Yeah, but Ashley is kind of yes, our right. persuasive yeah, tank. Tara is very good at persuasion. And she's terrible at perception. Yeah. So maybe I'll go that way just because it's nice that we all have like unique skills. The heroes have finished their skill challenge, and thanks to a sending spell from Lumpen, they've met back up again. Where do they meet up? Where does Zartok and his crew reunite with Terra and her crew? The Moonstone, the Garden Gnome Village, somewhere else? Why are you asking such hard questions? Is that a hard question? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I feel like the, moon's, the Moonstone's a good meeting spot. That's, uh, that's Mun's place, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Sure, yeah, let's do there. All right, so you land your ship's at the Moonstone, your next objective was to confront Lavarian and decide what to do next. You know that he has built an army and a navy, sailed them over to Laravella, the peninsula that was once the heart of the Empire of Regid, and begun a war against the Neogi and their slavers. I hesitate to even ask, as I recognize this may be opening a large can of worms, but are you still headed to confront Lavarian? No, no. It wasn't to confront Lavarian. It was to assist Lavarian, oh. possibly betraying and uh, confronting him later. Okay. Well, you could confront someone in a <laughs> non confrontational, non violent sure, no way. way. Sure, sure, sure. Right. We're, we Neogi bad. Right. Kill Neogi is, I think, the initial plan. Okay. In any case, you're going to go meet with Lavarian. You're hoping. I, I I typed it in the Discord um, at some point, so I'm looking for what it said because I think my plan then was good, whatever it was. Okay, <laughs> it was well. it was good. It's just we forgot it. 
Okay, I think they're going to seek audience with Lavarian. Uh-huh. He deceived them, but they want to see to try and figure out what his actual goal is uh, to see if we can help them amicably defeat the Neogi. Right, and then right. Okay, I mean just to br- just to bring up like remember we had a thing where there was a bad wizard who tried to kill us, and we kind of forgave him. At the bottom of the wizard complex. I mean, we kind of let that go. So this is, we've done it before. Yeah, well, okay. But like, I feel like that was totally different. Like he <laughs> seemed like he could kill us and we, we really were just not going to start a combat with that guy. <laughs> yeah. oh. Boy, you put it that way. <laughs> we were too weak. I mean, we could go back right now if you want to. Yeah. Let's go uh, another side quest. Let's go. <laughs> side quest, let's go kill that uh, necromancer right now. Anyway, that's so I just, just wanted to remind white. everybody that we did <laughs> we did forgive somebody for trying to kill us tw- more than once. So so Lavarian tried to kill us only one time, whereas that guy tried to kill us at <laughs> least twice. And we didn't get nearly as close to death though, right? With his little like goofy skeletons. Zartok, Zartok disagrees. Zartok <laughs> disagrees a lot. <laughs> I just target the guests are pretty hard. <laughs> Hera was fun. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you're right. That is that is back when that is back when we uh, didn't like Zartok. So I mean, maybe we still don't, but we, we definitely did it back then. We all just laughed as he's gut punched. <laughs> Your ships land on the landing pad. You exit the ships and meet back up again. You can see that Corellin's needle is in good shape. And so is the uh, the Lance ship. And what do you want to do? Garlos is still a halfling. And <laughs> is herself. Everything looks uh, normal. Insofar as this is normal. And it's been months since you've seen each other. Coral, I guess Coral looks a little stressed out. Yep. She, Coral, you have this constant buzzing in your head nonstop appeals for prayers you were successful in promoting yourself as a god of knowledge and now you are confronting the consequences of that as you are constantly <laughs> barraged with requests for help here's here's a uh, here's a question uh, i have uh for you oh game master yes <laughs> So you have said that there is like if i can get away i can like get rid of the problem at like the voices for a little while right i was very vague about what that would mean uh-huh. i know yes uh so <laughs> hypothetically if i were to plane shift elsewhere uh presumably that would do the trick right there's only one way to find out <laughs> okay i didn't have it prepared for today so it'll have to be another day okay okay well we'll we'll see We'll see what happens if you try that. So when we did the role-playing, we did a bunch of awesome shows for our good friend Coral. But I also made a promise to do, you know, musicals and songs for Seafoam Wonder. But would I be allowed to retroactively say I did that? Or do I role-play that I never did that? <laughs> we can say that you also did some promotion of Seafoam Wonder, sure. Okay, okay. That's fine. That If you want to say that you did that, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, because then my tattoo might turn into like an angry face to see foam on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're maybe sending a little bit of mixed messages there, but you can say that you did that. Uh, okay, so you, you are all meeting back up again on this large disc on the Moonstone. Maybe I should put the picture of the Moonstone back up here. Yeah. To give you an idea of what that thing is like. Overall, I think, um, you know, we're going to have some stories to trade. Yeah, I mean, Tara's definitely going to want to know what uh, Zartok and Anzna and Garolos' experience was like. And no doubt, Aster's going to want to share his experiences. Because mm-hmm. Aster's the chatty one. <laughs> <laughs> I have something for Zartok. God, it's good to see you guys. It's been so long. We've done so much and it's been months. I feel like it's been a whole lifetime since I've seen you guys. Enzna, you're looking good, flashy, respectable. Well, that's very kind of you, Asta. You're looking dashing and, and colorful, as usual. 
Really? You're making me blush, which is hard, because my face, you know, is of a dark gray complexion. Yes. <laughs> um, well, do go on. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you're fine. Uh, Gerlos. Hey, buddy. How's halfling life? Uh, it's slow. <laughs> it's weird. Like, I can't reach the stuff. And, like, uh, I gotta sit in, like, a different chair to or climb up into the regular chair with a booster seat. And, uh, I gotta, like, uh, I gotta look... Gaston in the eye sometimes, you know, and sometimes that makes me a little uncomfortable, but it's all right, I guess. I mean, you should be very honored to see eye to eye with Gaston. He knows a lot. Very wise beyond his years. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's uh, he's good at telling me what to do. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I can't remember. Gast Gaston stayed with us, right? Or did he go? It was yeah. just Enzna. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. It was just Enzna and Zartok and Gerlos. Gotcha. Yeah. But Gerlos is just, you know, looking over at, at Gaston now, eye to eye. <laughs> where they're level with each other. It's weird. <laughs> um, I feel like maybe he won't be able to boss me around as much because now I'm the same size. Wait. But I was big before and he bossed me around. <laughs> So maybe size doesn't matter. Huh. So I'll always be bossed around no matter my size. Okay. All right. Well, I can learn to live with that. No, you're not being bossed around. It's collaborative. Oh. Yeah. How do I know when to collaborate unless someone tells me? <laughs> this is a complex conversation. <laughs> okay. Um. Well, Gerlos, I'm glad you're okay. You didn't have another death. <laughs> nope. You're looking good. Yep, I'm good at not dying, only done it once. Yep, I mean, if you die again, you could become a dragonborn or something really cool. Wow. Uh, Aster, let's not <laughs> encourage that. It was pretty um, <laughs> difficult to do the first time around. Um, let's, no, don't do that. Oh, yeah. What's a yeah. dragonborn again? Big dragon man. Scary looking, don't like those. Oh, we don't like them? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> oh. Really short. Oh, they're really short. Yeah, even shorter than you are now. You oh, would dear. Just, I, you would struggle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, avoid that, then. <laughs> oh, oh, Zartok, Zartok. I've got some, some riveting information that I think you would really like. Okay, what is it? We met vampires in Oztazam. Oh. oh, did you? It was, it was... He made us. Oh, no, that was a group decision. Right, Tara? Um, you wanted to go. <laughs> is sure. uh, I I think I was accurate. <laughs> I, I think mostly it was you wanting to go, Aster. But I'm glad we did. It was fun times. Right, right. We got to talk to them. They were very scary. Very scary. Not very cool. Not not cool at all. I thought they'd be a little bit nicer. But you know, who knows what dealings we've made and terrible things <laughs> may happen. I hopefully that is not the case, and they will work with us. Oh, Destiny, why would you think I, that I specifically would be interested in this information? Uh, <laughs> um, mm. I think he's saying you're like scary and evil, maybe. <laughs> no, that is that is that is not what I'm saying. Zartok, do not oh. listen to that. I was gonna say he was a good boss. I think. <laughs> I think he did a good job when we were flying around. Yeah, saved us from those plants. It's because you, it's because you have tattoos, Zartok. That's what it is. What? Okay. Yeah. You have tattoos too. <laughs> I think most of us have tattoos at this point. <laughs> so true. Not me. <laughs> oh, really? We need to change that right away. What? Yep. All of us need to get inked. My skin's too beautiful for tattoos, though. Look how pretty I am. <laughs> it's just a smaller girl. I can't argue with that kind of logic. Yeah. Don't even try. You could just get a pretty tattoo. Like a butterfly. Mm, oh, a butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. Something I, I just I just noticed is we don't have like a, a, a sigil or a marking of some kind to, you know, signify us as 
The Glass Guardians. We should all get Ooh, a matching tattoo. Ooh, branding. Yeah, let's talk about branding. I love it. Marketing <laughs> and branding. Those are the best discussions. Whoa, Carlos. I did not know you knew about those big words. Well, we I learned all about it when you guys spent, you know, a few months talking about the name of the group. <laughs> <laughs> let's do that again. What about a butterfly? <laughs> I don't know that a butterfly speaks to glass gar unless unless the butterfly's wings are made of like stained glass. Yeah. We, we could be going in a good direction. Whoa. Yeah, I think that's it. That's... Nailed it in one. <laughs> <Take off butterfly. laughs> First try. I'm not gonna lie, that's actually really cool. <laughs> a stained glass wingspan of a butterfly as our symbol. Yep. Yep. I think that's the tattoo you're getting, Garlos. Congratulations. Wait, tattoos. Wait, we all <laughs> getting that as a tattoo? Yeah, absolutely. No, no just you. Just oh, you. No, all of what? us. Zartok. Nope. Yeah, it's all of us. I'm already I'm already covered up. Oh, we can no find some left. space. Nope. There's nothing left. I can I have one cheek available for the other one. Oh what? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Aster was pointing to his cheek at that time. Yes. <laughs> his facial cheek. Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, I, okay, if we're all going to do it, I'll do it. I'll, I'd love to get a, a pretty butterfly. I mean, butterflies are things that go through a metamorphosis, a transformation. That's what our group is. We've transformed from just would-be explorers to heroes. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and I metamorphosed to <laughs> this thing that I am. It's called a halfling. Yeah. And arguably, you're better for it. Okay. Why is that? Because you can go, f like, have you ever seen Papa Gaston sneak into places and I sneak into places? It's a lot harder for me to kind of hide in locations, but Papa Gaston's an expert. Oh, you think I should be sneaky? Yeah, I might be. Okay, <laughs> well, I'll try that. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'll try sneaky. You might struggle, um, because you still have armor. Oh, hmm. <laughs> I'll I'll work on it. Yeah, that's that's a fine task for you to take on. Okay, so what are we doing? Oh, yeah, we're catching up. It's been months. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 but it felt like just yesterday We went to a crazy place Where there were uh, all sorts of people Buying and selling stuff And it was kind of out in like this dark space place, you know And then they chased us back to the ship And then Zartok picked us up and we flew away Ooh, did you do something cool? No oh, oh. Why did you guys get run out of a nice little trading hub? Well, there was some pretty fruit <laughs> <laughs> and I liked it. <laughs> Apparently, I wasn't supposed to take it, but I did. And then people got mad at us. Oh, so you you s stole? Oh no! Do you think being a halfling? Do you think <laughs> being a halfling is making me like Gaston and I'm stealing stuff? <laughs> no, I don't think it's being a halfling. It's oh, it's equivalent exchange. Uh, Garlos, did you put something? There in, in place of the fruit. Oh, that's what I forgot. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, next time. Let's go back. <laughs> I really am getting the feeling that maybe you're not wel welcome back. Oh. Uh, Anson, how, how was this? <laughs> how was the experience? I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe we could mix up the cruise a bit. Oh, well, we're, we're, we're joined together now, so, you know. Oh, are we all getting on the same ship now? Yeah. Oh. All right, then. I was thinking we would continue with the two ships and have them together, but I suppose it also makes sense to uh, just put everyone on one ship. Always put your eggs in one basket, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> I, see, I see where you're going there. <laughs> Can we not drag the second ship? Like, tie it to the Krellin's needle, or it has to be manned? I can fly it. Wait, who said that? Was that Lumpen? No, that was Lumpen. I can fly the other ship. Oh. Or this one, but not both. Or not. You don't seem to like that idea very much. No, I just... Uh, well, 
You know, it's it's definitely a ship that I guess could go straight. <laughs> yeah, I like that part. <laughs> uh, while this conversation is happening, Coral's going to start walking towards Mun's Tower. All right, Coral starts walking toward Mun's Tower. And is everyone else moving that direction as well or continuing to discuss? Or maybe you don't even notice. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, this might be a, a like a Coral sneaks away kind of situation. Okay. Coral, are you being sneaky? I don't know that she's trying to be sneaky. I think she just walks off. <laughs> <laughs> she, gets, she gets to be a god, and now she's all teen angsting all the way to Mun's Tower, see? <laughs> <laughs> I think a, a revelation, um, you know, besides all the adventuring, is that we weren't quite 100% successful in our mission. I think we was mostly successful, wouldn't you say, Ansna? Yeah, I mean, most of the Jaws make it, but not all of them. Under the circumstances, I'd say we did relatively well. Oh, okay, what what happened to the other Jars? Well, they broke or got stolen. <laughs> you, you know, things happen. I People mean, stole the Jars? You, uh, you did the best you could, I guess. We had a stowaway, and oh, it... Uh, let's not get into it. In, in, in any case, we got most of them placed. <laughs> oh. Wow. I think we did a pretty good job. Yeah, we we were, I would say, very successful. I think so. Well done. Is she, like, full-on god mode yet, or what? What's our status? Um, I, yeah, I guess, I guess so. I don't, I, I mean, she didn't get, like, outlined in gold or anything, but no one I've seen that's been a god has been, so... As far as I can tell, uh, she seems a little maybe distracted. Um, kind of withdrawn recently. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, that I think she's got a lot on her mind. Yeah. Okay. I just I was just curious if you pulled it off. Sounds like you did. Yeah, of course. Your circlet of leadership, Tara, says, you know, there are leaders and then... And you get a feeling it's sort of indicating toward Zartok. Then there are, you know, leaders. Circle, <laughs> 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 oh, let's throw a shade. <laughs> we were always certain we would be successful. We're very convincing. It was a lot of fun, too. It was fun. It was. I just want to add one more thing, because I think Coral just ran off. And we should go to Mun, but real quick, Zartok, one thing I am concerned about, um, besides all the pleasantries here, um, what does this mean for us? I mean, you're the one who's had conversations and connection with the far off one. What does this mean now that there's someone vying for her spot? Can two gods uh, live in the same space channeling this kind of magic? I'm not sure. I don't. I'm not. I don't think so. I, well, I think both of them can draw on it simultaneously. So the four off one is still going to get some some prayers. I think. I see. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I haven't. I've been in space. So. <clears throat> Who are you praying for? <laughs> for your spells. That's funny that you ask that because I haven't had to pray yet because I haven't used spells in quite in since the uh, since the plant incident. So. Yeah, I, I, it hasn't happened where I need to. Well, you've you've uh, you've had to fly the ship, right? Oh, that uses, that uses spell spells. Slots. That uses spells. But we got we got it so quickly that it didn't matter. <laughs> oh. I, didn't, I haven't <laughs> oh. been a new day yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. It's, there's so many spell slots. I'm level 15. It's like, it's insane how many spell slots. It's just nuts. I got spell slots for days. Baba Sass attacks Zartok. I'm kidding. But I really <laughs> want, I want to make you use spells so that I can find this out. <laughs> That's funny. Well, uh, you know, I just, I think for morale's sake, you, you got to pray to Coral. I mean, it would be kind of terrible if you didn't, really. Yeah, I mean that would that would really stink of betrayal, and maybe she would storm off and not talk to me <laughs> as soon as she sees me for months if that's something I did. Yeah. <laughs> huh? It's weird that you say that. That's kind of what just happened. <laughs> oh yeah, that is weird, isn't it? <laughs> Where's Papa Gaston? What? The, I'm right here. I am sort of insulted <laughs> because you said that. Uh, 
<laughs> halflings are not cool and are not better than dragonborn or whatever that is. <laughs> wait, so wait, we're not. Wait, we are better than dragonborn. Or wait, wait, we're not better than dragon. Okay, I think so. I'm so confused. So, dragonborn are smaller than us, and we're better than them. Are they smaller than us? You're saying that because we're halflings, we're better than them. I. Is that what no. we're going with? No, we're just saying that y- you don't you don't need to keep dying to try new races out. We just oh. we just you're gonna stay where you are. Okay, you're, you're great. Yeah, I'm not really into the dying part, so you yeah, know I'm not gonna goodness. try. Okay, well, but you're so good at it. Unless somebody gives me a really good offer. No, no okay. one's gonna give you any good offers like that. Okay, cool. Sorry, Papa. It was just fun, Josh, and of course you're awesome. Regardless the race. I I think having a slow metabolism and never buying shoes is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I don't have to wear these shoes? I've been no, wearing you, shoes. You look stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, so no shoes. So, Coral, you arrive at Mun's Tower. Okay. The doors are closed as usual. I assume you walk up and open them and walk in. I do. Yeah. So inside you are greeted by some little rag golems. And they look a little surprised when you walk in. But they gesture for you to walk deeper inside. I go where they gesture. Okay. And you walk into the main hall. And Mun is actually in here. And he's sitting in an easy chair, reading a book. And when you enter, he looks up in surprise and stands up and says, Oh, Ms. Petrichor. Uh, greetings. Uh, hi, I'm, I'm sorry to disturb you and your book reading, but uh, I have a question for you. Of course. I need a forked metal rod that is attuned to a different plane of existence. I don't care which one as long as I can live there. I'll pay you for it. I'll pay you most of what it's worth. I see. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Look, looked at the amount of money that I had. <laughs> May I ask why? Uh, I figured out that I can do this spell called Plane Shift, uh, yes. uh, but I gotta have a thing attuned to another place. Uh, and... Honestly, my head's killing me and I need to get away from here so that I can just have silence for like five minutes. Just like five minutes of silence. That's all I'm asking for. And I need I just need to get out of here for just for a minute. Planes walking is quite dangerous. Why would you need to planes walk to relieve a headache? People are just praying oh. all the time. Just all the oh. time they're praying. I see. And it's, it's, it's a lot. I just need to get away for a minute and get rid of this headache. So your plan was successful then? Yes, it does appear so, but there are uh, consequences that should have been expected, but were not. Uh, yes, I'm afraid I've never been a god, so I'm unable to share the frame of reference to understand what you're going through. Walk with me, please. Yes, of course. So he walks into the back room, up the stairs, past some security doors. Lights turn green as he goes by, and he walks into a storage room and begins going through crates and boxes looking for spell components. And we'll cut back to the rest of the group. You continue to discuss. where Are you taking both ships? What's the decision there? Are you taking both ships or one ship? Mm. I don't know. I mean... (laughs) Good question. Tara wants to be on the main ship. Of course. I don't know the benefit of the other ship. Like, can we even use, like, its artillery without sufficient people? And You actually could. You could take a crew member from Corellin's Needle and put them on the Lance ship, and you would have enough people to man that ship's artillery as well. So it would be like Anson Garlos and... Silver eye on that ship. Sure, right. Although I don't know who would be the technical leader of that ship with the four of them. Yeah, with, uh, I mean, well, if you have, it depends. If you have Zartok flying it, then he would be. If you have Lumpen flying it, he would be. 
Well, ants know would be. I think ants know would be. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Ants know sort of leans over to Tara and says, "Look, I understand the possible organization options here, but I'm going to insist that if this ship is crewed by Lumpen, me, Gerlos, and Silver Eye, that I'm in charge." Yes. Most certainly. Very well. And the other ship would be everybody else. Hmm. I think a, that's a good A team, B team split, split. Are there any other things that you need to discuss? Are you going straight down to Laravella where Laverian's army is camped out? Uh, do we have any ways to uh, attempt to communicate with Laverian's army? Uh, I suppose you could always have Lump and Cast a Sending spell. Or you could just show up and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I feel like maybe we should try and, uh, you know, hey, we would like to join or to have an audience with Bavarian because we also want to fight the Neogi. Okay. <laughs> is that what you're going to have Lumpen do is try to send? Well, he doesn't know Lavarian. Hmm. Is that the role you have to know them? Uh, I don't know. Let's see what sending says. Send the short message of 25 words or less to a creature. There's a typo here. It's supposed to say, a creature with whom you are familiar. And I would say Lumpen is not familiar with Lavarian. So you can't just be familiar with them like, you know, like, I'm familiar with Britney Spears. <laughs> it does say the creature hears the message in, it, in its mind, recognizes you as the sender if it knows you. Yeah. So yeah. that does, I don't know. Other things I've listened to or watched have had it work where a person can just try to describe, uh, but this is a DM's call, so yeah. whatever. Zartok can do it if he's got to. If Zartok has sending, Zartok could easily do it. Yeah, Zart- Zartok could send the sending. It would be the next day but or whatever, but... I think that is reasonable. That's not a normal spell he he does. Yeah, I think that I think that would be the way to go. Then, yeah, we would. I would think we would rather than just like randomly approaching this um, active more. You know, just seems kind of off. Mm. All right, what what would you uh, have us say to the great Lavarian? Yeah, twenty five words. Twenty five words. I love this game. This is great. <laughs> Hello, we are the Glass Guardians. That's six words. The Neogi. Hate us. It's true. And we hate them. Also true. We would like to meet and discuss mutual ally beneficial. Yeah. A- ally, ally, a mutual beneficial alliance. Oh, I think you nailed it. I think that's exactly. 25 or 25. Good job. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> like, I've gotten good at this, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <excellent. laughs> 10 out of 10. Now, my, my real question is Is the hello have an exclamation point or is it merely a period? It is or, a comma. Oh it's, a, sure. it's, oh, it's that. It's like that, is it? Okay. Uh, I, yeah, I, I don't like, think. Like opening a, an email, right? Just like, just hello, comma. Yeah. It's very, it's very corporate. Yeah. I got it. Exclamation is too enthusiastic for a conversation with Lavarian, I think. I've, yeah, I got you. Yeah, and it's really just the, it's straightforward. I'm not like, hi, I hate these guys, and you hate them too. So you're going to have Zartok send that spell to Lavarian? Yes, but it, as Josh said, it would be tomorrow. tomorrow. Because uh, tonight we have to, like, you know, have a feast, talk, relax. We had a long several months, and Zartok needs to prepare a spell. Yeah. And to do that. I would need to pray. Yes, to Coral. Oh, 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 yeah, you would. Excellent. <laughs> Coral, back in Mun's tower. Mun is rooting through this box, and eventually he pulls out a, a fork-like device. He says, aha, I think this should do it. I think this is tuned to the astral plane. And I can, I can like, live there and stuff. I suppose. I just like I don't. I'm not gonna like poof in there and die. Like no oxygen or whatever. Oh no, no, it's it. No, no certainly not. No. Okay, okay. I don't need to be there forever. I just probably need to be there for a little bit. Okay. Well, uh, perhaps I should tell you a bit more about the astral plane. Would that be helpful? I if I'm I'm gonna yes, please. <laughs> the astral plane is usually a place where visitors travel as disembodied souls. It's sort of a silvery 
fog or sea with white and gray streaks of mist swirling around and you can see distant spots of light. It's mostly empty, but occasionally visitors stumble upon the corpse of a dead god or a chunk of some lost civilization floating in the void. There are pools of magical colored light. There are beings that live in the astral plane, but certainly simply going there is not a death sentence. You can you can exist there as you could here. That's uh, that's fantastic. I really I just I just need I just need to be able to get away. I got uh, I got 176 gold I can give you for that. I don't I don't it's not worth what it is. I I can't pay it enough, but that's what I got. Hmm. I will I've noticed that I've had to start praying for my spells and I've been praying to the far off one, but since you are now elevated, shall we say, let's make an arrangement. All right. I'll give this to you, and I'll direct my prayers to you for my spells, and you can just owe me one. Okay. I, uh, yeah, sound, sounds like a win-win to me. Thank you. Certainly. Is there anything else I can do for you? Uh, no, no, you've done more than enough. Thank you so much. And thank you proactively for the spells which I shall receive. Of course. Check one more. Yeah. Go Coral. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what else uh, is the rest of the crew doing? Are, are you going to stay here for the day while Zartok prepares his spells? Um, it seems like a nice place. It sounds like a good place to rest. Okay. You staying on the ship or are you going over to Mun's Tower? I want to go to Mun's Tower. Can okay. Sylphonia come with me? <laughs> she can't go in the tower. <laughs> oh. Sorry. He's. Uh, I think taking one's mount inside the tower would be frowned upon. It does seem kind of uh, rude. I'll stay with, with uh, Sylphonia on the ship. Is anyone else going to the tower, or is everyone staying on the ship? Gaston will stay on the ship, Zartok will go on the tower. Okay. Uh, yeah, Mom and Sass will go to the tower. Mom's got good food. Yeah, that's true. What? Gaston changes his mind. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Gaston goes to the tower. What about Tara? Uh, well, I guess Tara's gonna go to the tower. Okay. Lumpen will stay on the ship, Anzda and Gerlos will stay with the ships. You go to the tower, is there anything particular you need to talk about with Mun, or are you just staying the night? Oh, yeah, we're just unwelcome guests. <laughs> well, he'll put you up for the night. He actually has guest rooms, so he'll put you up for the night, feed you. You'll have a, a comfortable evening's rest. If there's anything you want to talk about with him, we can do that. Otherwise, we'll assume the night passes uneventfully. Can we get food um, also sent to our, uh, to our friends at the ship? Sure. They, they deserve it as well. All right, so some rag golems carry some supplies, some, some prepared meals over to the spell jammers. Uh, and everybody gets some hot meals. That's called leadership. <laughs> yeah, says your circlet. Coral eats the meal and then goes out into the woods to sleep. <laughs> to sleep, all right. Yeah. Can I see my character's messing around with arcane energy while he's praying to Coral, trying to figure out he feels like he can tap into more things, something inside him feels like he can reach out into other things, and he's trying to test what that means and how he can use that with his mount. Okay. He's just playing around with magic with everything he has at his disposal, which includes Sylphonia. So maybe those magical secrets that let you cast spells from other schools or from other classes, and you're using that with your new situation where those spells maybe have to be prayed for. Yeah. Okay. And so real quick with Crown of Stars... <laughs> Crown of Stars. It's a spell that creates seven motes of light that appear in orbit my head, so it targets only me. Now, Find Greater Steed says, you control the mount in combat. While the mount is within one mile of you, you can communicate telepathically. While mounted on it, you can make any spell you cast that targets only you also target your mount. Mm -hmm. So would that put the motes around my horse as well? Um, let's see. Crown of Stars. You can use a bonus action to send one of the moats streaking toward a target. 
Uh, the spell ends if you expend the last moat. If you have four or more moats remaining, they shed bright light in a 30-foot radius and dim light for additional 30 feet. And it's not going to give you extra moats, if that's what you're thinking. No, but I was thinking maybe I could split them between myself and the horse, so then the horse could fire some, like she can enter combat and use the three or four moats I give her. Here's what I'll say. I'm not going to let you get extra bonus actions by giving them to your Pegasus, but... I would let you have them circle around the Pegasus so that you could expend light in a larger area. Instead of just having light around you, you could have the Pegasus also projecting light around it as well. Gotcha. It would allow you to have more areas covered by this this light. But it would still require whatever the usage of the star or the moat would be. That's right. But I could, could I fire it from the Pegasus? Yes, you could. Yes. So I don't have to be mounted on it after the spell's been cast. That's right. Yes. To fire that yes. moat. As long as you can see the target. Yes. Cool, and then she could shed light as well. That's right. Okay, that's fair. Cool, I'll keep looking into that. I just wanted to see if I could have her interact more in combat. All right, so you spend the evening. The next morning, Zartok, you have to pray to someone for your spells. <gasps> but why? Okay. It's time. <laughs> Zartok, do- Zartok does it. He d- this is awkward for him. So he's like looking around his room. He gets down on his knees by his bed like he's a little boy. Because <laughs> that's what he thinks these people do, I guess. <laughs> so he's like, dear God, I haven't had to pray for spells before. It feels a bit transactional and awkward. And it's kind of a bit against the point, a bit silly. You know, I did spend years studying the arcane arts to do this by myself. But here we are on my knees begging for something I should have already. Um... You know, it's also strange to be asking someone with fewer years than I have on this earth for knowledge. But, you know, it's a it's a continuous journey, I think. And it's something that never ends. Because each time we we discover something about the universe, we also learn a little bit about ourselves. So, in a way, I think maybe it's fitting that you, a young woman, are the god of knowledge in the end. So... It will be a privilege to watch you grow into this role. And I ask that you bestow upon me spell slots all the way through 8th level. And if you're not able to do that, then maybe I'll reconsider this whole arrangement. Thanks. Bye. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. Coral, out in the woods by herself, is genuinely moved and provides the spell slots. (laughs) Uh, She did it? Yeah. It works all the way through 8th level? Yeah. Zartok's like, oh my gosh, this might, this, we might pull this off. (laughs) I like that you didn't believe that until now. I'm sorry if I started yelling at my puppy again. I was doing that earlier. That's okay. I'll edit it out. He was eating stuff he shouldn't eat. What's he doing? <sighs> that's, oh. that's what puppies do. Yeah. Well, he's three. I mean, he's just a puppy oh, in okay. size. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that's what some grown-up dogs do. Yeah. <laughs> I only hit my leg on a cabinet because you made me laugh.